Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn, and I've got a very special guest with me, uh, Yvonne Debats from uh, Delassen Brewery mm -hmm. in uh, Brussels, Belgium. Yep. Thank you so much for, for coming on the show and for, for stopping by. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you so sure. much. Um, so, for those of you who may not know, uh, I guess for those of you who come to the store and are for those in the the, uh, the beer club that we do, you may know uh, the beers of, of Della Sen are a personal favorite of mine. But really, I think in the general landscape of American beer, it kind of, um, well, I think you put it best. It's their brewer beers. A lot of the people mm -hmm. I know who love your beers are very passionate about them mm -hmm. and tend to be people who are either work in bars or are brewers themselves. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think brewers tend to um, navigate or kind of go towards your, your mm -hmm. beers? First of all, I kind of think that the they feel that we brew what we want to drink, actually. Our philosophy mm -hmm. about making a beer is extremely simple. Uh, we brew what we like, and, and we are brewers, so most probably we have a taste like the ones of our, of our colleagues. But also I think that the brewers um, understand probably better the essence of beer. And a lot of people, especially some beer geeks, forget about that a little bit, but the essence of beer is to replace water on a more funny way. And so you expect something to be light, refreshing, but way more from it funny than water because you have the com complexity of, uh, of taste, of flavor, and so and, uh, and also you have a little bit of alcohol, of course, that's the funny part yeah. of it. But, but this, this is really why uh, beer has been uh, invented. Um, to replace actually, water in a more uh, fun way. Yeah, and, and, and in the past on a secure, secure way as well. But uh, but but that's really what, 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 what yeah, yeah exa exactly that's really what beer is and and this is why I'm drinking now a delicious pivot pills from yeah. my friends at Firestone Walker that that's also a brewer's beer mm -hmm. um, and also when you are a brewer you know that those kinds of, of kind of beers like a pilsner or or Taras Bulba um, because they are so light and delicate and that the the, the drinker will be able to taste any fault on them. Mm -hmm. These are the most difficult beers to brew, actually. It's a sort of an achievement to be able to, 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 to brew, to make a good Pilsner beer. And, yeah, or any kind of very light, delicate mm. beer, yeah, which definitely. I think Terrace Bulba, your hoppy pale ale, I guess I would call mm -hmm. it. Yeah, um, well, I call it Belgium Session Ale, actually, with yeah. 4.5 ABV. Yeah, yeah. really r uh, light, kind of very crisp. Mm -hmm quite hoppy, a little mm. bit of bitterness, mm. and really yeah. meant to be not kind of sipped, but, but drank. Exactly, uh, you know? exactly. This is something, in, in my personal evolution, I, I think more and more about it. Beer is something that should be drunk by volume. Mm -hmm. And I don't say that meaning that beer is no interest because volume would equal no interest. No, you, Or that you, you mean to get drunk by it, because that's another way you ex could Exactly, take it. Yeah. exactly. And this is really not my style personally. But uh, honestly, you really want to enjoy a good glass of beer and, 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 and like just, like you said, drink it. Yeah, mm. because I, I do find myself when I'm talking about beers, sometimes you have beers that are maybe good at festivals or good if you're doing these big bottle shares like you said that you know mm -hmm. beer geeks and beer uh, kind of enthusiasts like to do and a beer is great in two or three or maybe four ounce servings but yeah. you know that is not the beer you want to have on a Wednesday night with dinner or something like, like that that's like, something like, that exactly. you want to have with volume mm -hmm. and sometimes I'll I'll say this is a beer that is meant to be kind of gulped rather than mm -hmm. snips, you know, just yeah. sipped and swished and, and so definitely on and so there forth. There is nothing wrong with, with, with that, if the beer is good, of, right. of, of, of course. So what brought you to love those types of beers too? Because you started mm -hmm. out not necessarily, um, well, let me start, let's, let's start again. So what, what got you to a point where you were liking those brewer beers or how did you come to kind of have that be what you wanted to brew? It's a sort of evolution, personal evolution, I, I guess. But I remember when I was home brewing, that was back in 97, 
Um, I was already making beers very light, but extremely uh, tasteful, mm -hmm. actually. It has always been my kind of beers. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just beers that you like to just kind of sit down, mm. appreciate, cleanly made, mm. but meant to be kind of, meant to be drank, not yeah, meant to, be, yeah, not yeah, meant to yeah, sit yeah, on exactly. a shelf in a, in a closet and, um, for a couple of years. And I also like the fact that you can drink several glasses and still work the day after. True. So we, with our Tarazuba, we, we guarantee manageable hangovers, <laughs> and then I think it's, it's cool. Money back guarantee mm, for that, uh, yeah. Sort of. <laughs> yeah, depending on how many you have. Yeah, 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 indeed. So could you mm. tell me a little bit about your history with beer? Uh, because I know that you were involved with beer or very interested in beer before you were kind of professionally mm. involved with beer. Yeah. Well, I, I have a very precise year at least to, to point it, and it was back in 1989 when I first met uh, the guy I could call my mentor, Jean-Pierre Van Roy, the father of yeah. the Brasserie Cantillon in Brussels. I met him then for the first time, he, I, he, he shows me around and we have this chat and in really uh, literally five minutes he transmitted his virus to me, his passion for the good beer and before meeting him as a teenager, I, I drank beer mainly for get drunk, okay, yeah. that happens, but um, with him I could see that uh, you can have beers that are so interesting, so well made. Uh, that they are made based on values, beautiful values, mm -hmm. and that it's worth fighting for those values. Okay. Uh, so I call Jean-Pierre often my, my sword master, master because he teach me how to fight for the good values behind good beer, actually. Could you tell me what those good values are? Or is that clean, drinkable, kind of what you were talking about? Oh, it's, 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 it's a lot of things. It's, it's, it's first um, having a real uh, respect for yourself knowing yourself, mm. knowing what you like. And I think that if you know that, if you respect yourself, you really respect the customers, especially if you prove for yourself, then that's, that's what we do. Uh, a focus on quality is extremely important. Uh, an understanding of uh, nature. The beauty of our trade is that we work first off with natural ingredients and, and that's a, a, a superb extra, with uh, something that is alive. I'm talking about the yeast, of course. Yeah. Um, because the, the brewers always say we make the beer. No, it's the yeast that makes the, the, the beer. And I think that having a huge respect for your yeast is something extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that is very hard to explain. It's something that you have to, to feel. It's intuitive. Um, but when I'm in the brewery, when I'm in front of any of my fermentation tanks, I really feel that I can be like in communion with, with my yeast. Uh, sometimes I talk to her. Uh, I know it's, it's crazy, <laughs> but I, 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 I would. Yeah, uh, in your language, it's a, it, in my language, it's, it's a she. Very, mm -hmm. very important for, for me. I consider she is part of the team, and um, we've been very far uh, at De La Seine to try to to make our yeast happy, because I think this is the key of good brewing. You have to have uh, happy yeast, and we have uh, therefore designed very uh, special type of fermenters. They are very shallow, actually. They are oh, way yeah. wider than, than tall. So we, we give no pressure, no physical pressure on our yeast. Mm -hmm. That's what you get in those very tall cylinder yeah. conical fermenters. We have like a, a physical hydrostatic pressure that yeast doesn't like. Uh, and it will have as a consequence that she will release in the beer some uh, chemicals that for me can't give a good beer. It's, uh, it's almost impossible. Um, so we have designed ourselves those very special fermenters. They are not that special when you think about it because I took my inspiration uh, in the geometry of the tanks of the 1920s, 1930s and, and, and from open fermentation tanks. Yeah, kind of like the uh, squares or the Actually, it, 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 it was in, in my case um, cylindrical tanks oh. but, but very flat Okay. Uh, because I had uh, the chance to, when I started my career of brewer, to work in the 1920s brewery and they had those wonderful tanks and I really loved the, the, the kind of ester profile you get in those tanks and I, I really wanted to mimic that but all tanks are closed and equipped with CIP spray ball because mm -hmm. we are hygiene free so we want to be sure to clean CIP uh, what is that uh, cleaning in place oh, so oh yes, we, yes we want to be really sure to to be able to clean them perfectly and, and in an easy way but but we we really get the same kind of estuary profile you can find in, in open tanks of the old days actually okay and just for for some people out there who 
may not understand. It's something that I've I've been thinking about and, and talking about lately. You know, you have all beers essentially of all styles being made now in this same shape fermenter. If you've ever seen a, a, even a graphic of a fermenter, they look like tall things on four stilts that come to a cone at the bottom, and those are called cylindroconicals. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they can be m s several stories tall. Definitely. And the, the physical pressure of mm -hmm. all that liquid mm -hmm. on the yeast, you're saying, stresses mm -hmm. the yeah. yeast in yeah. ways that having a sh more shallow it geometry can. wouldn't. Definitely. It has been shown scientifically, so it's not like a... Right hippie thoughts yeah, because right. I love my yeast. No, it, it's, it's, really, it's really science. And um, the, you, you, one has to, to understand the, the, the logic behind that. When a brewer wants to open a brewery, he will ask himself, okay, I have this surface, I have this uh, room, how many fermenters can I fit in, actually? Mm -hmm. And of course, the tall fermenters are better for that because you put a very big right. volume on a, on, a, on a small surface. Sure. Um, so it, it's a, it's a logic which, which 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 I understand. It's totally efficient. It's very easy to work with those things. Also for uh, a lot of reasons. But we, we, we did it reverse. We asked ourselves first what will make our yeast happy, mm -hmm. and we accept to put less volume on a on a larger surface actually that, I think that, that's a question of philosophy and I, I understand both and philosophically and just for a matter of, of history I know you're uh, a big um, lover of uh, beer history and something to me that has always been just interesting is how different styles developed in well in many different ways but one of them are the fermenter geometry you know English beers traditionally had mm. certain types of fermenters and mm the Germans and lagers, uh, and now essentially because of these fermenters, not to talk too much about it, mm. I mean, we talk about bottom fermenting and, and top fermenting beers, uh, essentially with some of the conicals, we're making all beers bottom fermenting mm. and, and we're mm. kind of taking different types of yeast and sticking them all in the same type of fermenter, which historically was never the case. So I get yeah. worried about you know, are we losing some sort of character, some historic character that used to be around in some of these beers? Mm. Let's say some of the, the English styles that were in these, like I was talking about the Yorkshire Squares, mm. now if they're only going into cylindroconical, do you think that that's going they, to, we're going to lose some essence of that yeast? They will change their behavior as a sure thing, and they will mutate genetically on a natural way, of course, but, but indeed, the, the, those yeasts cannot be the exact same. So most probably, it's true, we are, we are losing something. But we are losing something also because uh, they, they are, the, the brewers nowadays, especially the new breweries, they, 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 almost all of them, they use the same kind of yeast. Yeah. There is one yeast that originates from uh, the, the West Coast, California, which is extremely yeah. popular now, now, and that is used everywhere on the planet nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very good yeast, it's a yeast extremely easy to work with. Mm -hmm. But, well, it, you, you know the importance of yeast for the flavor of the beer and, and, and it has huge influence. And so you have a sort of a average that, 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 that's come, that comes worldwide. Um, if, you, if we talk about the saison, uh, there are almost only two, ye yeah. two yeasts that are used now. Uh, because some yeast companies uh, have like stolen those yeasts from bottles yeah. of uh, remaining saisons in Belgium. Actually, one is in Belgium, the other is in France. France yeah. But that yeast comes from the brewing school where I studied, so it's a Belgian yeast also. Okay. And uh, and because it's one is farmers, the other one is, is saison. People think you you have to use those very yeast for making a saison or farmer sales, but that's not true. Imagine you are a farmer in the 19th century, and of course you will use your yeast and you have it because it, it has always been it's there. It's yours, yeah. And when you get an infection which goes really too far, you take the, ne the yeast of the neighbor, which is a total different yeast, etc., etc. You had like dozen and dozen of saison yeast in the past. And depending on the way you work, you want to make your saison, I consider you can make a saison with, with easily 100 different yeast. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not a problem. But that's, that also shows only the fact that the choice of yeast becomes very limited among mm -hmm. some brewers. Of course, something that creates, again, variety, and that is very good, 
it's all the trials with um, wild yeast or mm -hmm. wild cultivated yeast, sure, I don't sure. know how to call them nowadays, and of course spontaneous fermentation also. So at, at, for certain beers, uh, there is a sort of average and everybody is doing the same thing. For other types of beers, it's finally exploding, it's yeah. exploding the, the, the variety and it's very good. So with those kind of beers, we find back some of the variety and complexity we could find everywhere in the old days. Okay. So it's not like... A, a so there's one and only. another thing is beginning and kind of Exactly, things. exactly. So I suppose it balances itself. Somehow. Okay. So I know um, Cezanne is an excellent example of something that was very prolific and also very, it varied quite a bit. And up until very recently, it was really, like you said, one or two mm. yeasts and brewed kind of the same way, maybe a little stronger, maybe a little bit more esters, maybe a little sweeter, maybe a little drier, mm. but all variations on that same yeast profile. That's starting to change. Another beer that I know you've written about extensively is the Belgian white beer. And the very same thing was happening there. It was essentially an extinct yeah. beer that yeah. was brought back. And the version that was brought back, be, pardon me, being Hoogarden, yeah. essentially became the template for all wit beer and what a lot of people think wit beer always was yeah. and always should be. Exactly. But that's not the case. No, and I to consider you, this style to still be almost totally extinct because there is something the Belgian brewers at least don't understand. Um, it's that the key of those, because there were several wild Belgian wheat beer styles, the key of those beers was in the fermentation and in the lactic fermentation. Okay. So for me, there is no real Belgian wheat if there is no lactic fermentation. Okay. And when you see what those beers uh, became, I mean, the. The, the kind of beer for the people who don't like beer mm -hmm. some, somehow. You could name them li like that because it's, it's kind of sweet, kind of easy, very low on, on bitterness, which is normal for the style, of course. Packed with uh, spices like coriander, orange peels, orange etc. Yeah. It's, also, it, it's almost like a sort of a beery lemonade when mm -hmm. you think about it. And for me, it's extremely boring. But when you, you dig into the past and, and, and how those beers were really made, uh, you see that they had very, very complex fermentations and that all relied on the lactic uh, notes on those beers. And it, it, made, it makes this style extremely exciting, actually, while the reasons what we see now is, is not for me, at least. Do you know of any examples that someone might be able to get of a more traditional white beer, wit beer? No, honestly, not, not really. I, I'm, I'm sure they, they exist, but they are not very famous and I, I don't know them. I made one once in Montreal with our friends of uh, Dieu du Ciel people. Yeah. Uh, that was extremely light and with a clean lactic sourness. Um, but that, that was just one shot. We called it Blanche du Plateau. Blanche Van de Plateau, actually. Okay. Um, three years ago, I guess. Okay. Um, uh, another thing I know is that you are quite political with some of your labels. Mm. Earlier today, you were really talking for five minutes about each label and the parts of the story. Mm. And um, why have you chosen your beer labels as uh, somewhere to take, like, kind of make a political statement? I guess mm. is there something about that or something from your past? It's, it's something that really belongs to us, and I mean, it's really my partner Bernard and, and, and I. Um, we, first off, we, we, like, we like the things to be funny somehow, but we like the things to have a meaning, to have sense. Uh -huh. And uh, we live in a crazy country, Belgium, uh, where politics are really, really, really crazy. And we, we are not happy with, with that, and, and we like to to make jokes about that on our labels, mm -hmm. de de definitely. And we'll show some graphics of some of the labels. I mean, the artwork itself is, is just, just that alone it's is really great to look at. I but know, then it's actually the cousin of Bernard who does the, the artwork. His name is Jean Gauvart. Okay. And he's one of the greatest genius in design we, we have in our country. And is there any way that drinkers who are interested could find out the stories behind these labels other than coming not, across you and asking no, no, you? Not really. It's a, it's a little bit on purpose because okay. they, are, they are very complex uh, labels with 
obviously different layers of understanding. And so it's very clear for the people that they will not get the whole picture. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's cool because then they, they can invent a story themselves, which is nice, but they, they can also come to us and, and ask us. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it creates like a, a relationship, which I think is cool. But sometimes they get misinterpreted. I know there was a yeah, case of the yeah. the Zwarte Piet. The Zwarte Piet, yeah, which which is a totally anti-racist label, mm -hmm. which some people, especially in Anglo-Saxon countries like UK, US, and Canada, misinterpreted, uh, and they thought we were racist, right? It was just mocking the colonial past of Belgium mm -hmm. because we are ashamed of that. We think it's a scandal, and nobody dares to talk about that okay. in, in Belgium. But but we did. Uh, we also mocked with the same label the very first cover of Tintin in Congo that was obviously very racist comics. Uh, we wanted to, to really mock that also. And the funny thing is that we have had so many black people, black families coming in, in the brewery to buy the posters of it. And, and ah. some put it uh, in the, 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 the room of their children and they congratulated us. They, they said, you guys finally, you, you, you are totally Belgian people and you dare funny to talk about your co colonial past it's it's so healthy to do that and you make jokes with it so it, it can create debates they, they they said thank you thank you guys continue doing that mm -hmm. but because we had this these bad comments coming from from the internet we said okay we cannot continue that way we we accept all sorts of insult but not being treated racist because that that's really not us uh -huh. so that beers out of became the Brusselaire, it's the same recipe, but we changed name. Ah, okay, oh. interesting. It's just interesting that even now, uh, labels are still getting people up in arms. It's something that we've talked mm. about with some of these American breweries that are mm. yeah. have labels that people um, find offensive. Um, mm. Sometimes they're meant to be offensive, and sometimes it's just a complete misinterpretation. I know that my friend Tommy Arthur has had problems because on one of his labels, I forgot the name of the beer, he, he, the, there is a, a witch and, and he has now an anti-Facebook page um, made by the association of the witches <laughs> or I don't know where <laughs> and they hate him for, for that. That's great. And, uh, I would be very proud to have such a web yeah, uh, right. to a Facebook page I think. It's, it's, it's super cool. Um, and, and I think it can, it can we, we are a crazy country but you guys also sometimes yeah, so this can happen only in the US but I, I, I like it. <laughs> it's very cool. Um, so I think uh, I could probably go back and forth and talk to you for, for quite a while, but um, you know, before we go, is there anything else that um, you uh, would like to talk about in terms of Belgian beer? Uh, maybe some viewers out there who have only tried maybe U.S. versions of Belgian beer, um, mm -hmm. kind of what to look for or, or kind of what the essence of Belgian beer is. I know that's a big task to kind of give you. What is it's Belgian just, beer? It's, it's <laughs> in five name. words or less. Yeah. I have a very easy and stupid answer to that. It's a beer made in Belgium. <laughs> and so it can be anything. Ask a stupid <laughs> and, and, question. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just impossible to, to answer to, to that. And, and another easy answer in the past would have been like, uh, we have this crazy variety of beers in, in Belgium. But honestly, we have been stupid enough to let die most of our most interesting traditional styles actually mm -hmm. and I have to say some something to do a sort of tribute to a guy everybody knows it's um, uh, Mike Jackson and probably he's not with yeah. us anymore uh, today but it's really him at the very last moment almost who discovered the richness of our brewing uh, heritage in, in Belgium and because he wrote those great books and he, great he worked on Belgium, TV, yeah. especially in, in the US, he could create a market in the US, which is a market big enough to save a country yeah. la, 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 like our. Um, and so the, the last remaining stars that were not dead at the time were saved by the, um, the, the crave of Belgian beer in, in the US. And so I cannot say now, we, we still have, we have to look to the real craft people uh, making the beer they want to drink th themselves. What are uh, a few breweries we, we, that you we, would we recommend? We have like a, a dozen of them uh, in Belgium and, and the beers the, those guys are making are really, really exceptional. But honestly, for some of our very traditional styles, you find excellent versions in the US because mm -hmm. the, the US brewers um, with their 
fantastic passion, enthusiasm, and good organization also uh, learned extremely quickly how to make do those ancient styles actually. So is there any um, Belgian beers, meaning made in Belgium, mm -hmm. that somebody who would be interested in, in finding, um, you know, kind of authentic old world mm -hmm. versions of uh, some of their favorite styles, is there any breweries in general that you would recommend that they look at? Obviously, Dallas yeah. Sen would be one. Well, of but course, but I, I would recommend the, the best girls makers, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, that's a must to, to try if you want to discover Belgian beer. Of course, we have Cantillon uh, in Brussels. You have uh, Drie Fontaine in, in Basel. You have uh, the Cam, very good also. You have a newcomer, uh, Pierre Tilquin. He's making the first One of my Clambix. absolute favorites. Oh, my god! The, 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 the guy is a guy to follow, really. really. He, he's very talented, very strongly opinionated. Is he? But he, he knows what, what he does. Mm -hmm. And he's a, he's a blender, so he buys yeah. word from other breweries. Um, very, very good beers and a really guy to follow. Um, but I like also very much what Duranki does, yeah. uh, Blogi people, yes. they, they, they make a wonderful saison among others, the, mm -hmm. the saison des potres, very, very good stuff. I like a lot what uh, the dollar brewers are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, there is also this, uh, these young guys coming with a very traditional hot burn called um, Breuerei Verzet. They make very good things. Oh, I don't know, uh, what are they called? Also Verzet. Oh, uh, Verzet, yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in Flanders. Yeah. Uh, there is the Brasserie de Bastogne in, in south of Belgium, uh, Rull also, all those guys made, make great beers, definitely. And we have others, of course, impossible yeah. to name all of them, but, uh, but the people should be aware that um, there is a new phenomenon, massive in Belgium, and, and it, it, it's, it's also starting to be big in the US, it's what we call the beer firms, and so it's people who just sell beer it's their own brand but they don't make it they are not producers of the beer mm -hmm. uh, their beers are made in a big factory contract in, brewing in, in, is in what the shadow call it here and most of them they have a very dishonest way to communicate because they will let the people think that they are the makers the, the real brewers or they will focus on the the fact that they create the recipe if you are a real brewer you know as a sure thing that if you imagine you have a brewery you have all the necessary skills, um, everything, the, the knowledge, the recipe of a beer, for me at least, is 20% of what the beer really is. Mm -hmm. The rest is the skill of the brewer, the, the choice of technology, extremely important, the, the yeast you use, the way you treat your yeast, etc., etc. That makes the beer. Okay. You know, if you want to, to, to make one type of beer, there are at least 20 ways to get there. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously not the recipe that makes the beer. Mm -hmm. So beware of the people uh, presenting themselves, fencing themselves as beer creators. Mm -hmm. That's bullshit. Is there any so way sorry. to, uh, that someone can educate themselves or, or be able to pick up a bottle on the shelf and know that? Or it's really... Most of the time, no, because we don't have a good regulation for that in Belgium. We've tried to, to, to push the authorities to make some, but um, nothing to do. Uh, at least the, 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 the place where the beer is made should be written black on white. Yeah. Some do it, most of the time it's not black on white, it's red on red, so it's not very easy to, to read it because the people don't read the label, it seems, and they play with that. Yeah. But uh, most of those guys, they, they don't do things with their hands, they are just marketing people or finance people, and they want to, to, to jump into the beer business because beer is trendy Just to now, capitalize, and, yeah. And they imagine they will make easy money doing, doing that. So the, the real beer lover should really avoid those people. So they kind of know know your farmer, they kind of know your brewer, know where your beer comes from, exactly. and know who's making it, exactly. and exactly. for what and, reasons. And with which kind of values. Yeah. Very important. Awesome. Mm. Well, thank you so much. It's been enlightening. I've been a big fan of your beers, and it thank was you. nice to have a chance to sit down and, and talk beer with thank you. Thank you so much. I've been here with uh, Ivan Debats from De La Sun Brewery. Uh, thank you guys, as always. Um, any emails or anything you want to do, you can email me at info at craftbeertemple.com. Um, if it's a show you enjoy, I always ask that you recommend it to someone else and pass it along. And until next time, guys, thank you so much. I've got some great beer to drink, and hopefully you do too. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.